right, guys, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro here, Mark Daniels Jr. Today, we're gonna take a look at the office, my 2017 Ranger Z520C, powered by Mercury 250 Pro XS Torque Master. Come on, y'all, let's go take a look. One of the most important tools on the boat. If this thing's not working, I'm not making it back to weigh-in. So here's my 250 Pro XS by Mercury. It's a Torque Master, big gears down here. As bass fishermen, we fish a lot of shallow water. Sometimes we clip things while we're traveling, but these bigger gears with this Torque Master is gonna get me back to weigh-in regardless. Gotta have a good, reliable motor. I can't stress that enough. Moving right along, I love shallow water fishing. I cannot hit the lake without my power poles. These are eight foot blades with a soft shell close. As I hit my buttons and those blades come up, they're not slapping and clamping, making a lot of noise. Very quiet, very stealthy. Allows me to get into places and fish quietly. Very important. My jack plate, again, for not only shallow water, putting my boat on the trailer, I like to raise that plate so I don't damage my lower unit. Uh, Bob's machine shop, man. I cannot stress to you guys enough how great of a jack plate this is. Full power, 73, 74 mile an hour running down the lake. When I need that motor to come up, I hit that button. That Bob's machine jack plate is not hesitating. It's coming up right now. And that's very important when it comes into getting in some of these backwater areas. A lot of shallow water, different obstructions. You don't want to damage your equipment. You need a very reliable, durable, smooth, and strong jack plate. So back here, typical setup on the batteries. Uh, of course, I run a 36 volt trolling motor. Um, so I got three batteries dedicated to my trolling motor and one dedicated to my cranking battery. Uh, these are standard AGM interstate batteries. I've ran these for the last three years. They're a great battery. Um, you know, fish all day long, burning four units at times. Live wells ticking, everything's rolling. They get me back to weigh in safely. And uh, these are the batteries that I like to use. So jumping right over into the cockpit, you know, everybody knows Bob's Machine Shop makes a great jack plate, but they also make one heck of a hot foot. And as you can see right here, I got an all black murdered out one here on my Ranger Z520C, and I absolutely love this thing. All right, guys, so now here we are, the workstation. This is where I spend a lot of time behind these Garmin units, staring down, trying to find these fish, especially in those offshore style tournaments. And so, first and foremost, these units aren't light. When you go to select a mount, to put these units on, you need to be very particular. I really like this Bass Boat Technologies mount. It's extremely durable, uh, it's stainless steel, it's heavy, has solid bolts in it, and I mean, this thing will not move. You can see that, I mean, I'm really pulling on this thing. It will not move. I got two 12-inch Garmin 76 series on this bracket, and I've been in some treacherous water already this year, and these things will not move. Um, I know a lot of people question, why do you guys run so many units? Why do you need two units at the console? Well, it's quite simple. Um, quite honestly, you can get it done with one unit. I understand these units are very expensive and I'm not saying it's a necessity, but it makes my job a lot easier. When I'm fishing offshore and when I'm looking, I have the capability of having my map and my 2D sonar on one side, which really allows me to open things up I can look at the contour lines and really pinpoint where I want to idle over and look at. So I have that dedicated to one screen. Then I have another screen that I dedicate to my down scan and my side scan. This allows, again, for things to be bigger. I don't have to constantly switch screens. I'm not zooming in and zooming out. I can, quite, I can just look at my graph, see what I need to see, flip back and forth between the two units, the mapping, make sure I know where I'm going, and locate bass. All right, guys. You talk about a fishing platform on a bass boat. This Ranger Z520C probably has the widest deck and the most fishing space that you'll ever see in a bass boat. There are times when I'm out on the lake practicing for an event and I don't have it figured out. And I got 10, 12, 15, sometimes even 20 rods laid out on this deck. And guess what? I'm not worried about tripping over my rods and reels falling in the lake. This deck that Ranger has built is designed to have plenty of fishing space and as you can see, tons and tons of storage. Let's check out some of the compartments. So on my left here is where I store all my rods. Um, and this, obviously you can see how big this is. This compartment right here, you know, I can stuff 20, 25 Kistler rods in here and uh, got everything I need during the practice days as well as the tournament. Easy to access, pop this lid open. They got a very neat 
organized compartment system in here as you can see cut out tubes for individual rods to slide in making them very easy to get in and out then you got your center hatch this is where I keep the majority of my tackle um, <clears throat> I have all my boxes laid vertically in there I've labeled everything I try to stay somewhat organized I mean this is this is fresh after a fishing trip you can see I got a little bit of tackle kind of laid all over the place but what fisherman doesn't but uh, you can still again how much storage is in there tons and tons of storage I got four big Tupperware full of plastics I got all my hard baits my hooks my weights you name it my frogs it's all right there at a finger's touch nicely organized tons of space I'm not looking all through my boat I know where the majority of my tackles at right here moving over to this box right here this is a really cool box this is called a day box and generally what I utilize this box for is whatever I plan on using for that day I'll generally take out of this main compartment I'll put it in a smaller box and I'll set it in here that way I'm not opening this large lid constantly in and out all day I can just sit down like I'm sitting right now reach in here get my plastics that I'm using for the day rig up and get right back to fishing um, it makes it really easy also you'll notice I got my spare prop in here uh, in case I ever have a blow a hub or hit something and I just need to replace prop prop wrench gotta have that and uh, even got a couple flares in here in case we get in some bad shape out there on the open water and uh, can't get back in. So you kind of always got to prepare for the worst out here on the water and uh, tools, spare props, spare trolling motor props, things that along those lines are very essential in uh, fishing for, as a full-time angler. One last box up here is just another general storage box. I keep bulk plastics down here. Um, as you see, I got a couple Tupperware boxes some some bigger some bigger uh latch boxes with plenty and plenty of plastics in them uh again just tons of storage fire fire extinguisher in there and this is where my uh running lights held and uh again this ranger z520c is just loaded with storage loaded with space and makes my job a lot easier when it comes to getting around this boat you guys hear me talk about bob's machine shop and how they're much more than just a jack plate company i mean these guys make awesome products as you can see I have my pedestal plugs right here in front of me uh, that prevents water from getting down in those holes uh, becoming mil mildewy uh, causing uh, degradation to your, your, your carpet and your floor not to mention plastics falling down in there eight dollar tungsten weights falling down in there hooks etc those plugs are awesome if you don't plan on using your front seat just go ahead and pop those plugs in and then when you want to use your seat you pop them out and put your seat in uh, it's very, very easy to put in, and what's even really sweet about them, you can get them custom colored. Obviously, my boat's black and red. I like red accents on my boat. No problem. Give Bob's a call. They simply paint them red for you, and you're ready to roll. All right. Another key element on my Ranger Z520C is the trolling motor. I probably spend more hours up here on this thing than I do on my Mercury 250. You gotta make sure you got a good trolling motor. Uh, I like a Minn Kota. This is a uh, Minn Kota 112. Very quiet, very powerful, and uh, really just gets the job done for me. But what's key to note on this trolling motor is the trolling motor handle. I highly recommend not running with the standard nylon cord that comes with this. You'll probably break it within the first couple of months of boating just go ahead and spend a little bit of extra money get yourself a stainless steel cable this one happens to be a brand new one from Bob's machine shop called the big D this thing is indestructible I've been jerking on this for months already it's just not going anywhere this is a one and done investment uh, I put this on my on my trolling motor like I said a couple months ago I've been jerking on it for, for two months solid and uh, it's not going anywhere I mean you can really really jerk this thing and it's just not gonna not going anywhere so great investment right here moving over to my graphs my Garmin 76 series these are 10 inch screens and I already know the first question that's popping up in your mind why on earth do you need two graphs up front well let me explain to you Garmin has awesome technology that they just came out with two years ago it's called Panoptics 
As you can see, the transducer's right here. It's mounted on the shaft of my trolling motor, and it's exceptional technology. It's forward, live view. Unlike your traditional sonar that reads history, Panoptics is live right now. So what you're seeing is actually taking place right now. So what I've done is I've dedicated one unit solely to Panoptics, and then my other unit, I use a split screen. I have my mapping on one side, and I have my traditional 2D sonar on the other side. So that's the reason for having two graphs up here. And again, I'm using a Bass Boat technology mount. As you can see, it ain't going nowhere. It's solid as a rock. This is a brand new dual stack mount that Vans created over there at Bass Boat Technology, and he never ceases to amaze, man. This is another great production that holds both these units. They're not going anywhere. I don't care how rough the water gets, and it's another great investment that I like to put on my bass boat. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is mobbing up boat for 2017 as I go into my rookie season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Y'all wish me luck. I'm Mark Daniels, and I'll check you guys out on the water.